Okay. Perfect. Did you hear the voice? <laughs> we did. <laughs> Frank, did you hear the voice? <laughs> I did. I had to make a choice. Do I want to continue or not? But I continue. <laughs> right. I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> hi, Neil. Hi, Ann. Hi, Cliff. Hey, hi, well. Hi, Frank. Good evening, all. Hey, uh, Ann. Yeah. Before we get before we get going. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I noticed. Um, on Hartford Ave, where they're near the Medway line, where they're getting ready to do the road work on that intersection that we approved a couple of years back. Yep. That area on the right in between the culvert and that first house where the power lines go across, it, 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 it goes yep. off the road and then slopes down into the river. <clears throat> They're parking construction equipment and they're putting down um, mats, mats, timber mats. Yep. Is that part of the original? Uh, is that part of the? That is, is that, no. National Grid is doing maintenance on poles. And I've talked to them before, and Ann has talked to them before about accessing that area through the town's property off of Pearl Street. And the response we get from them is, we're exempt from the act. We don't have to do anything. So instead of going in through an upland area that the town owns and is willing to let them access, they're gonna go through the expense and, and aggravation and alteration because they're exempt. Okay, I just I didn't know if that was them or the the road work because it's a it's no. the piece of equipment there is a large is a pretty large excavator. No. Yeah, that's how they're going to lay the mats in. Yeah, they started laying mats. We did get notification from National Grid. National Grid. What two days ago? Yeah. Pretty much, nothing you can do about it. We're just letting you know. Frank, what do you have for us tonight? I see a hole oh. in the ground. Well, um, this will be sort of a little bit unpleasant for those of us who went lived through 9-11. Oh. But it wasn't the first time an airplane hit a New York um, building, skyscraper. So in this date, 1945, oh. a Army, U.S. Army um, B-25 bomber took off from New Bedford to bring a port a uh, naval guy to New Jersey to a new assignment. And it turned out that the, um, the fly, we're flying over New York City, it was very, very foggy. And the air traffic controllers told him not to do this, you know, to go, go to someplace else or go back to New Bedford. And he decided, the pilot decided he was gonna fly. Uh, as he was flying lower, because he thought the fog would get a little bit uh, less dense, he noticed in front of him the Chrysler building. He did a quick left turn and smashed into the 79th floor of the Empire State Building. Oh God. Um, all three of the guys, you know, the, the two pilots and the passenger were killed. And unfortunately it was on a Saturday morning, but the, uh, the people working on that floor, there was a, a war charity type group, uh, 11 of them were killed. Um, one of the engines of the plane went through the entire building out the other side, flew a block away and landed 900 feet below on the top of a, uh, another building and destroyed the penthouse and burnt it down. The other engine went into the building, went down the elevator shaft and got stuck. And there was a poor woman stuck in the elevator. Oh my and God. One of the really impressive things was the fire department got there very quickly. Within 40 minutes, all the fires were out, including the buildings next door and on the ground. And they rescued the woman trapped uh, below the uh, airplane wreckage in the elevator. Bad news for this poor woman was that they took her out. She was slightly injured. They put her in another elevator, sent her down, and the uh, cable in the elevator was damaged from the aircraft. She fell 75 stories um, to the basement. She survived. And so she has the glorious record of the uh, only person or the, the, the person who fallen the most floors in a elevator crash and survived. Oh 
my God. Um, and the interesting thing is that two things came out of this. One was on Monday morning, that, that's an 18 by 22 foot hole, by the way, in the 79th floor. Um, on Monday morning, people were back in the building working after Saturday. Wow. And then the second item, there were a bunch of tourists on the 86th floor that basically watched the plane come in. And they had a very, very um, stressful uh, Saturday. They were, no, no one else was hurt, um, but um, it was quite, quite the incident. So um, the, the building, the, the glowing flames on the building really remind me of 9-11, I gotta tell you, very, very wow. scary. The structural stability of the Empire State Building was so great, it, they did repairs, cost them a million dollars back then, but no damage was done to the, basically the, the structural uh, portions of the Empire State Building. So they know how to build them back then. I guess they did. I guess so. Yeah. Well, that is interesting, huh? And the I don't know if I'd want to go to the Empire State Building right now after reading that, but that's okay. <laughs> the, 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 the women, uh, the woman who uh, fell to 75 stories, so she, she escaped death twice. She must have feline ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> she was badly injured, but she survived. Unbelievable. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Um, sometimes your time is not up no matter what you do, you know? Yeah. Try as hard as you can. <laughs> and it goes to show on Monday, nobody got a day off in 1945. <laughs> no. <laughs> no mental health days. <laughs> oh. Okay, Ariane. Um, Ian had a conversation with, with Brian. Um, his mother is not doing well. She hasn't eaten in several days. She's uh, elderly. She's failing. And so he's unable to be with us tonight. Mm, that's too bad. Uh, and did you get a call from the Boy Scout that was looking for sign off? He called me when you guys were off. Joe, hot, uh, not no, um, trying to remember. His name. He did the he did the one in the middle of Bellingham Estates, the duck houses or bird houses. I got another email from him. I was on vacation. I was unable to download, sign, and scan and return, but I did get a hold of him. Okay. Um, and and hopefully he's. Did he send you the copy of the information as well? No, um, I wasn't sure if I was even empowered to do so, but I, I was a little hesitant to push it along when I found out that he had completed the project like back in January and just now was in a big hurry to get the paperwork. Although he said he had tried to reach you a couple of times recently. He didn't say even how recently. Um, I said, well, try her again. She's going to be back in town and we're going to have this meeting tonight. So I know you're going to be available. And that seemed to be okay with him, um, which is good because, you know, in addition for, to persistence being one of the good attributes of scouting, uh, timeliness is probably right up there too. I mean, you know, a little planning. Anyway, I, I mean, I, I thought it was a good project when he was going to do it. And I thought we saw a presentation afterwards, did we not? He did have a preliminary presentation, Mike, you are absolutely correct. Um, I had had, uh, I reached out to him a couple of times during the past year in COVID um, to ask him what the status was on his project. Um, and he said, well, it's COVID, it's kind of on halt for now. Um, so when I talked with him recently, uh, obviously the project is completed uh, from the photographs um, that he sent. Um, and he was asking for a sign off. And I told him, and I had a conversation with him verbally. And I said, it's very unfortunate you did not reach out to, to the commission because I know that we would have been a good resource for you, especially when it came uh, to, to um, uh, funding. Um, he had a, a fundraiser, a bottle and can drive fundraiser. And um, from what I could see with the summary of the fundraising that he had sent to us, um, that his parents contributed a few dollars to uh, the uh, to the accomplishment of, to his accomplishment there. I think that um, what I told him when I responded to him was that 
um, he underestimated the potential uh, of his resources by not reaching out to us. And I was disappointed in that and I let him know that. Uh, but the project came out well um, and he did complete it. Uh, so I signed the form and um, I guess we'll just have to get out there and see the boxes <coughs> as time progresses. At, at the meeting, Sean had indicated he was willing to make a monetary contribution. And goodness knows we have plenty of cans in our house. It was Jack Bombard. Jack Bombard. Yeah, that's them. Um, okay. Cans and bottles at your house club. Cans yeah. and <laughs> bottles. Yes. Okay. So it's seven o'clock. It being seven o'clock and a quorum uh, being present, I'll call the meeting of the Conservation Commission for Wednesday, July 20th to order. First, with the Governor Baker signing. A Senate Bill 2475, an act relating to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. The Bellingham Conservation Commission will meet utilizing the Zoom online option. Instructions and invitations are available at the town website at bellinghamma.org. Moving forward in this meeting, the chair instructs the meeting administrator to withhold access to speak at the meeting until or unless such persons requesting to speak are visible on screen and respectfully request such access. Okay, our first hearing tonight. <clears throat> um, Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold continuations of public hearing in accordance with the Metal Mass Wetlands Protection Act General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bellingham Wetlands Protection Bylaw on the notice of intent for earthwork, landscaping, stormwater management facilities. Uh, within a 100-foot and 50-foot buffer zone associated with construction of a multifamily residential development entitled Hartford Village 2, located at Sessions Map 23, Russell 6, Dixon Street, Bellingham. Jude Govan, Andrew, Andrew serving in engineering, Menden Street, Uxbridge, has submitted a file on behalf of KNS Realty, one stall with Road, Milford. The continuations will be held uh, online via the Zoom option on Wednesday, July 28th at seven. At the applicant's request, we're going to continue this. Um, just for the commission's information, uh, Andrew's survey has been purchased um, and the company is- Dupree Engineering. Dupree Engineering from Rhode Island. And they are making every effort to familiarize themselves um, with the application, with the construction that's already occurred. Um, they've been out in the field. They're doing some, uh, I guess they're gonna be doing new drawings, some redesign, tweaking the basin, uh, and they've requested a continuation. So acting on the request, I'll entertain a motion to continue the hearing to the evening of August 11th at seven. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Okay, Noel. Mike, uh, discussion. Quick question. Quick question. Uh, do we think that this review and revisions are gonna necessitate, uh, easy to say, um, more work to be done to rectify something or is it just to re reflect the actual? Do we think there's something wrong with the design or do we just, it's not matching the plans? Well, Frank has, Frank is undertaking the peer review and has submitted uh, his comments. He's going to submit. Going to submit, right. right. No, this is for this Hickson. Is Hickson Street. So no. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So there were so just very very quick general. There were some inconsistencies. Um, you know, if you have a detention basin and the volumes are the same for the one that was approved and the one they actually built, the outlets are the same, then you could say the hydraulics are gonna be the same. That was not the case. There were not really um, much in the way of hydraulic calculations. Um, when you looked at the plans, the overflow spillway appeared to be a few tenths of a foot inches above what was the top of the earth and berm around the Basin. So again, there'd be a question about the freeboard. 
And that may not be applicable only because that may have been approved under a different set of standards and stuff like that. So the gentleman from Dupree gave me a call, I directed him to Ann, but he did talk about they were gonna basically very, uh, undertake a bunch of stuff to familiarize themselves, actually do the hydraulic calculations that should be done to make sure that the before and after hydraulics are the same, I'm not sure that they are, but again, uh, they were gonna do that work. So Mike, in other words, it's highly appropriate uh, for them to undertake this additional thorough review and evaluation, so. Um, they did indicate that they were going to be submitting that possibly by the end of this week. So it's gonna to be tomorrow or Friday. Um, so hopefully that will give Frank enough time to, to mm -hmm. take a peek at the information. Yeah. Um, to continue. Okay. We'll so see. A motion, a second. Is there any further discussion? That being the case, um, all in favor? Uh, oh, I have to poll. Yeah. Mr. Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, do you vote in favor of the motion? Reluctantly. Noel. <laughs> yes, I vote in favor. Michael. Barely favorably, yes. <laughs> And Ariane. Aye. Okay, so by unanimous vote, motion carries. Um, to see if there's something we can do here. Do we have any other uh, <clears throat> projects that are currently being designed or presented to us that are by the same engineering firm that has now been purchased? Been purchased? Well, take, yeah. Um, uh, Chief and blanking here. This um, is the engineering company. That has yeah, been right. Purchased. Right, but they have come to us many times with projects. I'm just wondering, do they currently have any others in the pipeline? Who? who? Andrews. 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 Um, we don't have anything currently. No. Okay, I'm just, just checking because that could mean another similar situation popping up in the near future, whatever. I think Andrews is no longer an entity. It's right. no longer a business. I think it was a, it was purchased by Dupree. Yes. Okay, but they have, Andrews had nothing else uh, with us. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Dam Conservation Commission will hold continuations of public hearings in accordance with the Mass Wilderness Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bellingham Wilderness Protection Bylaw, and the Notice of Intent for the proposed roadway mitigation along the site frontage entrances correspondence to your motion. That wasn't the right one. I'm out. Do I have it? You might. Looking for the advertisement. We almost have enough time to go over to your house and sign any vouchers and permits yes, and then come back. Oh. Correct. We almost do. <coughs> Don't worry about it. Okay. The Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold continuations. Of the application for 455 Hartford Avenue, a nine unit commercial building, uh, stormwater management and septic system filed by Moshe Tias, Darren Properties, uh, Madden Avenue, Milford. Uh, so 
This is 455 Har Hartford Avenue. They've been, well, we've been working with them for some time. Is anyone on for it? I don't see the applicant's representative. What was your, what was your last conversation with the applicant? Well, we, we are early. We're 20 minutes early. Yes, but I talked with uh, Robert Duff this afternoon and told him, I asked him if he could come on for earlier. Uh, he's scheduled for 7.30. I asked him if he would come on for 7.05. Um, and Because we had the continuation at Hickson Street. Gotcha. Um, usually, usually we're not that flexible. <laughs> well, you know, what's what's been happening lately is that uh, applicants... Yeah have been using placeholders. In other words, we try to schedule our meetings relative to the flow of information. So we'll say to someone, are you gonna have ample opportunity to address these issues? And the responses that our administrator has been getting lately is, well, we think so. And if we don't, we'll request a continuation. So that's what happened at Hickson Street. Um, I have no idea what's going on here. Um, administrator notified them that we were moving them up and they were amenable to that. Uh, so we're going to have to continue this. But before we do, I think that Frank has done some work on this. I've taken a peek at this. Uh, I'd like, I did see uh, the mounting analysis. I was, mm -hmm. I was, I was convinced that they would have a problem with intercepting groundwater, but they don't. So I'll let Frank. Okay. So um, we have not completed our review. Okay. Um, this thing, the stuff came in like the 22nd and we got something Monday, the response to comments. So um, we've read through it. Um, and in general, they've addressed some of our comments. Um, they've pretty much submitted stuff. What we haven't done is gone through the hydrology, hydraulics to make sure things really did address the issue of the comment. Um, one item that we talked about the last time that's not, we haven't found in the plans yet. And so they have some, it's a relatively small site, as you know, and they have some interesting timer concentrations. The time it takes a drop of water to get from the high point or whatever to the other end of it. Some are like 40 minutes. I think a couple, that's one, a couple that are like 15 minutes. And what typically we would appreciate is if you draw with a little drop of water would flow across the site. And we've asked for that, we didn't see that. That's a relatively easy thing to do, I think, to be perfectly honest. And so I'm not sure why they would do that. Um, the, they did do the 25 year frozen ground, um, took a quick look at it. It looks like the water's at or over the top of the berm or the outfall. So I want to take a look at that a little bit more. That one foot of freeboard is, is sort of an issue. Um, and it may be okay. It just because it was only a quick look we took a look at. Okay. Um, okay. The they have provided additional uh, information regarding the flow depths. At one point they didn't, their calculations, hydraulic calculations did not show what the water was in the basins. Now, these are infiltration basins, and at some point in time, there wouldn't be any water in them. But generally speaking, at some point, there's a lot of water in the basin. So they didn't show, they're now showing that information. We just have to verify that. Um, they did use the canal data for the rainfall. So I think that's in good shape. Um, they did the groundwater monitoring in there. It looks okay, but again, I just did a scan of it. I want to make sure that the numbers work out. Um, the they showed on the plan the 50 foot setbacks from the infiltration basins, wetlands and stuff to the edge of the infiltrate edge of the septic system. It is exactly 50 feet. Mm -hmm. So again, that may be a board of health. We can certainly say that we think you might want to have a little bit of additional, but that's probably a board of health issue. That you know, the, the DEP is very clear, all the regulations for septic and, and uh, stormwater, you have to be at least 50 feet. And it looks like that's the case. Um, there might be an issue during construction. You'd want to make sure that somehow it didn't creep over. You only got 49 feet. That would be a problem. Um, but again, that's sort of a minor point. Uh, um, the 
Um, we had talked at length at the last hearing on snow storage yeah. Yeah. Uh, and even snow removal, but the snow storage that they showed in the plan was in fact sort of almost the only open area they had. It was like with some trees and shrubs in it, but it hasn't changed. And this, um, I think as you mentioned Cliff, um, particularly in the back of the building where detention pond two is or infiltration pond two is, it's gonna be really easy to maybe miss that turn and dump it into the wetlands or into the detention pond. And so I think a little bit more realistic evaluation of that uh, would be uh, required. Um, we've gotten some additional grading information, but there still appear to be, and again, this is a preliminary review. Uh, I keep on my stress that there still seems to be a lot of flat areas or some steep areas. It's, it's an uneven grade across the site. Um, they did add a, uh, a fence behind the rear of the site, basically up against the wetlands and, and the detention pond too, or infiltration pond too. But there is a little bit more work. We anticipate we'll have something to you next week on that, uh, the report. So. Um, question? Yes. Uh, so Frank, uh, did you say they put a fence behind there? I looked at the plans quickly, but I, and I was looking specifically right behind the dumpsters that they have in the corner there. I think that's by detention basin too, correct? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, the they, have a, they have a detail. Okay. I didn't, I, I'll recheck that. I'll recheck it is that. Not, I would agree with you, Mike. It's not, it is not shown in the plans. At least I, again, my quick look, I couldn't find it. The, the legend in the plans is not the clearest. And so for a while there, last time you may recall, I was asking about the little dots and they were trees. Yeah. Um, and so that would be a question if they show, but we certainly asked that we understand there's a fence, but could they help show it out on the plan? That would be handy. Well, another question comes to mind then, if they're gonna put a fence along that back corner and or the back side, the furthest side away from the paved area, away from uh, 140, uh, the, the question I have then is, well, if, I'm not 140, one, uh, 126. Uh, the question I have is, if you're doing that, then are you having trees in those areas where the four dots are shown in groups or are you having a fence? Because the trees can't grow where a fence is and vice versa. Um, so what you're having, and I thought I saw it still on the plans with the current advice set that they still show the snow removal areas right in the front, you know, yes. where they had before, within the underfoot. And I found it interesting slash amusing that they put that they their snow removal plan, they comment was, we would plan to remove three inch storms. They or grade right. Remove from the site three, three inch storms. Inch. My question is okay, what about a two and a half inch storm? You're not going to remove it? In which case, how much snow is created by that? Do we did we ever get an answer? I think I asked the question at the last meeting, they and the rep didn't have an answer. How many square feet of paved area is there in that project? Mm -hmm. Just paved, not impervious, paved. And did we ever get an answer? I mean, we shouldn't have to do that calculation, correct? I mean, they should provide that information. And certainly we could dig it out of the hydraulic calculations because they show the impervious area and stuff like that. It, it, to, to me, it's a simple applicant wants to get some, something from us, a permit. We have reason to ask uh, uh, from, uh, the authority to ask certain questions that are reasonable, which these are. And so if they can't provide a simple uh, answer to a very simple question, um, I'm baffled. But anyway, my, my response then would be then they need to also provide a calculation for how many cubic feet of snow are created with a two and a half inch storm on that amount of paved area. I wanna know how much snow is created, how many cubic feet, because if they're not gonna remove it, then they have to keeping out of the areas we don't want them in for snow uh, storage areas, um, provide an answer to, that satisfies us. I would think <laughs> that they have properly allocated enough area to allow for the snow that they're not gonna remove from the site. That's assuming that they stay all on their prop, you know, on the paved areas with the snow and not dump it over the hill and down into the wetland. Okay, we're going to need we're going to need more robust fencing uh, along those areas, and that will be part of the permit. Which means no trees in those areas. <laughs> well, where, where they show them. <laughs> I mean, it's one or the other, it, right? That, again, I looking quickly to plan. So in that rear area. Uh, next to the wetlands and detention infiltration basin too. They've got about a two to three foot wide flat area and then it's a three to one slope going down. So um, you probably could put a tree or you could probably put a fence in. I think it'd be real tough to try to put both of them in 
with the back of it at a three to one slope going down about four feet or so, three to four feet vertically. Um, so I would, I would agree that um, you may want to relocate the trees or I don't know, have tall vines or something like that or very thin trees. But the, the applicant, the applicant's <coughs> representative is not here. So you know, right. we're going to have to continue this discussion when they're <coughs> present. But I have one more uh, question. Uh, and this might be for Frank. Do they cross a MEPA threshold for a curb cut on a state highway? Um, yes. So mm. this is certainly, it, it, there's not an existing uh, curb access. Um, I'll check the numbers, but MEPA thresholds are twofold. You require a permit and then you have to trip a threshold. So I think it's, I can't remember if it's one or 2,000 vehicle trips per day. Mm. I think I think 1,000 is for an ENF and 2,000 is for a, uh, an EIR type evaluation. So uh, I will confirm this rather than rely upon my memory. But I think I think that there's a, a jurisdictional mismatch. They'll need the permit, but they don't trigger a threshold for traffic. Okay. Fair enough. Thanks, Frank. No problem. Not much else we can do on this. Um, we, and we've accelerated the schedule uh, in order to be able to be more efficient with our time. And then of course, we just wasted time. <laughs> well, we didn't waste time. We put this on the record. Uh, I have no idea what happened. Uh, But I think what we're looking at here is, you know, Frank is going to take a peek and provide them with information. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll be able to respond to Frank's uh, comments. We we had looked at scheduling them on August 11th at 9:05. <clears throat> so. Um, I mean, we have no idea if this is going to work for them, uh, but if, if we don't hear from them and somebody else comes along, uh, as much as I don't like doing it, we'll open the hearing and then uh, kick them to later in the meeting, later to the, later in the evening for their continuation, so. And, and um, I also want to add that um, they will be continuing with the planning board on August 12th, which will be the night after. Well, the planning board only met uh, once in June and once in July and once in August. So they're not as busy as we are. Yeah. So in that case, I'll entertain a motion to continue the hearing for 455 Hartford Avenue to the evening of August 11th at 9.05. <clears throat> so moved. Okay, you were letting me call in people? I had need a second. Second. Okay, um, Michael with the motion, Neil with the second. Um, I'll ask for the vote. Mr. Stanley. Aye. Noel. Aye. Michael. Aye. Ariane. Aye. Okay, by unanimous vote. Okay, very good. All right. That's not the right one. Okay. This is the right one. <clears throat> okay, the Bell and Conservation Commission will hold uh, public hearings, uh, public hearing in accordance with Mass Warrants Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 130, Section 40, the Bell and Warrants Protection Bylaw, and a notice of intent of the proposed roadway mitigation along the site frontage entrances to Curtis Apartment as required by Mass DOT, including installation of additional catch basins connecting to the existing system at the easterly end of the site and within 100 buffer zone 
the voting vegetative wetlands. The site is located in Sessor's Map 51, parcels 4, 4A, 4B, 6 and 8 at 161, 163, and 167 Mechanic Street, Ballymere. Keith Lincoln, Chappelle Engineering, Boston Post Road, Marlboro has submitted the filing on behalf of Russell Dion, Campanelli, one Campanelli Drive, Braintree. The hearing will be held uh, via Zoom on Wednesday, July 28th um, at 7.45, but we moved it up um, to 7.30 in order to be efficient with our meeting time. Okay. Um, so I think Noel, I think Jeff is going to need to share his screen. Is that correct? Or I think he, Keith, Keith might. Yeah, Keith, Jeff, would you like me? To, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm going to let Keith, Keith, Keith Lee, my, my engineer of record on the project. I, I'm representing Campanelli. I'm uh, the project manager for Campanelli on the project, but I'm going to let Keith drive and I might have some comments at the end. Fair enough. All right, I'm going to give you this ability. One second. All right, you should be all set to share. Thank you. Can everybody see that? Yes. We can. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Keith Lincoln. Um, I am uh, working with Jeff and the um, doing the offsite uh, mitigation for the proposed development, uh, the Curtis Apartments at 161, 163, and 167 Mechanic Street, uh, Route 140. The, um, the proposed project has two wetland locations within its limits. There's uh, one location to the west of the site uh, in a in conjunction with Curtis Pond. And then there's another uh, wetland area down uh, about a thousand feet uh, to the east at the bottom of the hill um, on the easterly end of the, the site. The, um, the proposed design, the proposed mitigation includes uh, minor widening of Route 140 for uh, the installation or the construction of a left turn lane into the proposed site, along with a 10 foot shared use path, which will run along the south side of the road um, in, a, uh, in conjunction with the town's master plan uh, for ultimately a shared use path along Route 140. Um, now, as I said, we've worked very closely with Bowler Engineering, the, the site engineer on this project. And um, these areas, this, this impervious cover, this widening was all included within the previous filing that had been prepared by Bowler. Um, what we have done is now we've submitted to the Massachusetts Department of Transportation for an access permit to do the offsite mitigation in association with this site as a state highway. Um, and that's what's brought us before you here. Um, as I said, there's, there's the two uh, wetlands uh, within the site limits, the one um, affiliated with Curtis Pond and these existing conditions plans just depict these two locations. Um, our construction plans include a site entrance to the east of the Curtis Pond wetlands. Again, this is this uh, area, the, the work within this area uh, has all is represents no change to the plan that was presented in the bowler filing. Um, this what we wanted to do, though, is to to give you a complete set of plans so that there would be uh, you know, uh, a very comprehensive view of the overall project and the work on the road. Um, so as we head further east, the roadway work is depicted in, um, in more, uh, you know, in a, a techni technical format, in construction format, and submitted to the department 
as a preliminary submission and as in, in the department's review, um, one of the things that was requested was that we provide additional drain structures along this southerly edge of Route 140 in or as a safety um, mitigation so that we can prevent the spread of water out into the travelway, the gutter flow from going out into the travelway. So additional structures are proposed along this edge. This, is the re this represents the, uh, the difference from what you had seen before under the, the bowler filing. So the water is captured uh, in these drain structures and what we are proposing is deep sump catch basins along the curb line, which then tie into a trunk line and run along the state highway to a point where it makes a connection to the existing drainage at the bottom of the hill at the low point on Mechanic Street and crosses. Um, so I'm gonna just go right to our drainage and utility plans, which show a better, a better view of the work within the jurisdictional limits here. Um, so it's this work right here that is within the, um, the jurisdictional limits that's brought us before you. Um, the, the proposed connection is to a new drainage structure to be placed on top of the existing drain pipe which is connected to the one and only catch basin uh, on the roadway within the, the project limits, um, which then connects to uh, another proposed structure, which will be um, another connection directly on top of the culvert pipe, which discharges across Mechanic Street and off to the north side of the road. Um, as I said, all, all of the structures are either deep sump catch basins, or in some cases, because we're, we're uh, directly above an existing utility, as in, the, in, in a case like this, as you see here, we're on top of the water line. So we're proposing a shallow structure, which discharges directly to a deep sump manhole, and then discharges into the, the trunk line. So, um, Basically, the, 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 there's no new water being introduced by the, by this, from this filing. What it is, is we've had to put in additional structures to prevent the spread of water out into the travel way. And in capturing that, we have to make a connection to the existing system that it's discharging to. And in the previous filing, what was happening was all the water would be traveling down the gutter of Route 140 and going into this one structure and then discharging out to the manhole, um, the existing manhole, and then across the street. So the difference would be we're intercepting that water before it gets to this catch basin here, before the spread of water builds up out into the roadway, capturing it. We're providing some additional water quality treatment by installing the deep sump structures and then conveying it into the same device that it was going in before. And that is pretty much the, the extent of it. And Jeff, do you want to add anything to Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Keith, thank you so much for that. That was a really, really thorough uh, walkthrough of it. Um, as Keith said, I just want to, try to, to, to reiterate that um, we're not adding any new water uh, drainage flow into this uh, equation. Uh, in fact, w if you factor in the uh, previous uh, permit application that we, we had for the work uh, on the Curtis apartment project, we actually in, uh, maintain, contained everything on site, uh, whereas there was some, uh, at least a good portion of the, drain, of the uh, site drainage was exiting uh, that property and making it down the actual the roadway access roadway that you can see coming in below the two structures that are highlighted in cyan and blue. Um, a lot of there's been a lot of drainage mitigation or drainage that's been coming through there. And uh, I, I drove there the other day when in one of those bad storms and, and that shoulder is 
without these improvements that that shoulder is in, is in terrible shape. So I think that this is really going to help mitigate and, uh, and solve the safety concerns on 140, uh, right at the, right at the, at the, the low point of that road. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I really wanted to, to reiterate. So if memory serves, um, in existing conditions, the water runs from the east and some from the west, but it runs down onto the Curtis site. I, I don't ever recall seeing water from the Curtis site running onto the roadway. In fact, the little building uh, just to the east oh. of the existing roadway is flooded all the time. Oh, sorry, sorry, it connects into some of the, a lot of the water from the Curtis was, was going through some of the, from the site previous to, to our, our improvements that we're working on, uh, was getting, not going into the roadway, but was cutting through and getting out uh, across, I believe, by previous ownership. So we, we're, we're terminating that, making that, that's not going to happen anymore. So, but you're proposing direct discharge to a wetland. Now on the, on the Northern side, um, a small, uh, we got water quality improvements with a small uh, four bay and infiltration basin. And you guys are just proposing to uh, discharge directly into a resource area. Now we had some, the commission had some concerns about this. And what we've done is we've requested that um, our peer reviewer uh, from beta uh, and I think Frank is present, um, just review the drainage calculations to assure that there's no additional water uh, volume um, being generated than what could potentially be generated now. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously we're concerned with the MS4 criteria. And even though you've got deep sump, deep sump catch basins and one deep sump uh, manhole where you didn't have proper cover, um, you're still discharging directly to a resource area. And based on our long-term experience with maintenance for DOT, which is horrendous, um, this system is subject to failure in a decade. So we want to make sure um, that the calculations are good. And we want to make sure that you've investigated every possible alternative because um, I think the commission is concerned that the deep sump catch basins may be insufficient um, to help us meet our MS4. I, I totally understand and respect uh, respect with the, the feedback, Cliff. Um, and we did go through uh, uh, some various iterations with connecting to some of what Lincoln Properties was doing across the street. Um, and I, I'd, I'd like Keith, can you can you speak to some of the calculations and the the studies that we did? to try to uh, see if that was a if feasible. Yeah, I mean, part of it was um, we, we were running into interference with some of the other utilities that we would have to cross uh, to, to make a direct connection. There was also concerns over the, you know, the adequacy of the, um, the um, I'm gonna call it a four bay, it, it, it just the BMP that's been placed on the north side, um, on the you know from the Lincoln properties as well, um, the one of the things that we run into is we're just we don't have a lot of space to work with, and we really wanted to try and come up with a plan that would be found acceptable to the DOT as well, because they are going to be the Department of Transportation is going to inherit this system, and this has been submitted to the department and approved uh, by. The department and their um, their um, permits engineer, their drainage engineer, um, as well as maintenance. Um, it's 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 just it's it's very important to try and come up with something that they are they have the resources um, limited, albeit, but resources to be able to maintain um, upon completion, and it is. It is certainly an improvement over what's out there now and over what was previously permitted in that there is some additional treatment that you will be getting through this proposal. So, you know, DOT is looking for expediency. They want the simplest thing um, to be constructed. And, uh, and 
we have had a multitude of projects with them mm. and in our and the record for like i said maintenance is poor um they don't like to really have to deal with above ground structures because right. i mean and we understand it's very easy to just ignore something that's underground i mean perfect example if you had an opportunity to look at the two catch basins that are currently in place <laughs> Have you seen the catch basins at the bottom? Oh. I've 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 cracked them. I've I've looked at those catch basins and I've cracked open the drainage structures. Okay. And what was the condition? They need to be cleaned. Okay. And they've needed to be cleaned for a decade. <laughs> so I'm resting my case here. That's why uh, we've asked uh, our peer reviewer to take a look at this. Now, um, if I'm not mistaken, there were some funds remaining in the peer review account for the Curtis apartment review. And we've asked our um, peer reviewer to, to take a look at the calculations uh, and evaluate and try to keep it within, uh, to keep his scope within um, the existing funding. Um, and Frank, are you there? I'm here. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, and part of the issue that, that I'm sitting here at this point is um, we've got relatively limited funds left. I think it's like $1,500 or something like that. Yeah. So I've taken a, a preliminary look at the material. It looks straightforward, but it would we would need additional funds to do the hydraulic check and evaluation. And that's certainly something we can get you a number on or a proposal on early next week or whenever, that's okay. I, I, I really want to proceed with this. You know, again, based on the track record that we've had, uh, additionally, we're going to need to do a site walk. Um, as we always do, I'm going to evaluate that existing wetland um, and maybe in the field, take a look at um, what the problems are with the grades. I, mean, I don't know if it would be possible to tie into the northern side drainage. Uh, I, I don't know what the utilities in the ground are. But in the field, we may have an opportunity to um, get a better idea, a better handle on the constraints that you're facing um, with the application here. You know, it, it, is it possible to somehow tie into the existing basin, uh, maybe enlarge the drainage easement a little bit, uh, increase the size of the plunge pole? Um, I, I'd like to take a peek at that in the field. Um, Frank, when do you think you could have those numbers together? I'll get something by Monday at the latest. Okay. Just to, I have something already put together. I just have to get the sign off from my um, powers that think they be. <laughs> okay. So what I'd like to do, um, when Frank gets those numbers, um, he'll submit it to the administrator. Then they can pass them on to you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, um, I'd like to get out there and check this site out uh, as soon as possible. Um, what do we have for availability on Saturday? Do we have anybody available to make a Saturday visit? Not this Saturday. I have a family obligation. I'm not available. I'm not available. Although I'd rather be doing that than what I have to do. <laughs> And did Noelle say she's not available? No, I cannot this Saturday. Ariane? I can't. Not. Um, uh, this is problematic for us because the next weekend. We cannot. We're tie up the next weekend. <sighs> We are tied up the next weekend. Is a weekday possibility? It's not a very big site. It's just yeah. walking along the edge of the road there, not getting caught by the traffic. Doing this work on a weekday is traffic. But well, we could do it. We could do that. that Wait. I mean, if anybody's available, the the, the slow time between on the on the roadway is the time that we've been uh, can, uh, coordinating our blasting efforts, and it's between nine Midnight? to one. If it, anybody oh. has that availability, between nine and one. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'd like the commission to see this. That means. Uh, it'll be after normal work hours, so. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. The traffic Anderson. jobs. <laughs> we all know what it looks like there. However, I think it's important enough that we all we all get out and take a look at it. Um, Does biking pass it for the last 30 years every day? Oh, well, almost every day, weekday, uh, count doesn't count bike. <laughs> doesn't count. Oh, shucks. Okay. Well, so let's look at next week. Um, no. Does anybody have availability on a weekday? Yeah, pretty much any day but Monday. Okay, so we can okay. Can kind of tied up. Ariane can't make it. Noel? I can make afternoons work. Okay, Mr. Stanley. Only probably after five these days. Tuesday at Tuesday is supposed to be a nice day, right? All right. Um, Mike? Yep. Can you do it? Any day but Monday. Unless it's af well after five. But any day after but Monday, I could do it uh, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much any time in the afternoon. All right. Six on Tuesday. How about okay. is five possible or six better? I think five is cutting it cl close to some of these guys. Five thirty. Yeah, any day but Monday. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Noel. Um, yeah, that works for me. Five uh, anytime after five fifteen, really. Five thirty. Okay. Neil. Yeah, the five five fifteen five thirty works for me. Okay. Five thirty. Okay. 530. So maybe what we can do. Um, Jeff, what's the best place to meet? Would it be on the lower uh, old entrance or is it uh, on the top? The access road that's right across in between Barrett's and the, and the diesel shop, we have a trailer, a job site trailer set up there. Perfect. Um, that's, that's probably the best and easiest area to pull in okay. and out of. Okay. So based on the fact that um, we're waiting, we'll, we'll have the peer review uh, scope coming in. Um, that account will be funded and the peer review will be conducted to review the drainage. We're gonna go out in the field. Uh, I'll let the motion to conduct a site visit on Tuesday, August 3rd at 5.30 and to continue the hearing to the evening of August 25th at 7.45. So moved. Neil? Second. Ariane. Um, discussion? Okay, Mr. Stanley. Yes. Noel. Aye. Mike. Yes. Ariane. Aye. Okay, by unanimous vote. So we'll see you out there. Uh, and we're going to, I don't know if Keith will be there. Jeff, you'll be there? Absolutely. Okay. It, will Keith be there? I can be there. Okay. Perfect. Would you bring your drawings, please? Sure. Our, our drawings tend to get messed up in the field. I don't <laughs> know why. <laughs> sure. We'll have them digitally on an iPad as well. Okay, fair enough. Thank you very much. Awesome. Fancy. Thank you very much Fancy. so much for your Fancy. time. On Fancy iPads. Hey, which are <laughs> paper paperless. We want to conserve, right? <laughs> They're harder to read though than the full size plans. They're so I totally definitely agree. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, so we're on track, I think. Um, so what we'll do is we have a, uh, 
We have a voucher to be signed. We'll bring that with us on Tuesday. So a couple of vouchers. There's no need to um, worry about this Saturday. Um, and I think that might be all we have to do for signatures before we proceed with the next hearing. This is going to be for the ANRAD. Um, it's a fairly extensive uh, situation. I don't know that we'll be able to do this one on the evening. And But, you know, if we have to, let's look at the schedule again. I'd like to get this discussed before we open up our next hearing. Maybe we could move. How's that going? For a Saturday the 14th. Hmm. How does Saturday the 14th look? For site walk for the ANRAD on Depot Street. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, oh good. Um, we have to get, um, we have to open the hearing room. Yeah, I know, but I want to get, sure, I sure. want to know who's going and who's available. Yeah, yeah. Um, Noelle, what do you think? Is that okay for you or are you more keen? Yes, I can do make that the 14th. Yes, okay. Saturday. Yeah. Okay. It would probably be like at 8.30. Okay. Well, that, that's very helpful. Um, Unless it's raining and they cancel again? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, really. Okay. Come on, a little hurricane wouldn't stop you, Cliff. We know that. Well, like I said, the last time we did that evaluation... It was uh, during a hurricane. So are we going to open up this? We're going to open it up right now. Okay. I don't know if uh, Nicole is on. Nicole, are you on? Oh. No, Nicole is not here. Um, I'm, I'm representing the application tonight. Okay. My name is Brandon. I'm with Bowler. We prepared the ANR plan or the ANRAP plans. Thank you. Fair enough. Uh -huh. um, are you OK if we start? Eight minutes, seven minutes early. As I'm the only person coming, so as long as the commission doesn't have an issue, it's fine with us. Fair enough. <coughs> Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold continuations of public hearings in accordance with the Mass Wellness Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Bellingham Wellness Protection Bylaw, on the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation with a confirmation of 4,200 linear feet of delineated uh, BBW located at Assessor's Map 38, Lot 23, and 23-1, 115, 152 Depot Street, Bellingham. Nicole Hayes, Goddard Consulting, Northbound Mass, has submitted the filing on behalf of Ephraim uh, Gersenberg, New Durham Road, Edison, New Jersey. The continuations will be held via the Zoom online option on Wednesday, July 28th at 8. Okay. So, um, not a whole lot to talk about. No, uh, well, for the record, my name is Brandon Barry with Bowler Engineer or Bowler. We're here on behalf of the applicant uh, and owner of the site. Um, I heard the discussion beforehand. I don't know if we would enter it in, but given the commission schedules uh, being busy the next two weekends, August 14th works for us. Um, and we, we would like to get that site walk scheduled. Okay. Um, I, that was, <laughs> we took advantage of a, a little bit of time between hearings, which normally we don't get uh, in order to discuss availability so that we don't have to do it during the hearing. Um, good. So uh, that being the case, uh, I would entertain a motion to conduct a site evaluation on Saturday, 
August 14th at 8.30 and to continue the hearing to the evening of August 15th at August 25th at 8.15. That works for us. Okay. August 25th? August 25th at 8.15. Hold on. Let's make sure it's okay. August 25th. Um, I'm out. How, how about 7.30? Why do I, why do I, I have a conflict here with the schedule? Second. Hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry. Uh, Can't take it back. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> my mistake. Okay. I'm gonna re I'm gonna reform my motion. I'll entertain a uh, I withdraw the motion and I will entertain a motion to conduct a site visit at uh, site inspection and evaluation uh, at 8 30 on Saturday, August 14th. And continue the hearing to the evening of August 25th at 7 30. So moved. Marianne. Second. Mr. Stanley. Um, all in favor, Mr. Stanley. Aye. Noel. Aye. Michael. Aye. Marianne. Aye. Okay, by unanimous vote. Um, Brandon, where do you think we should meet? We um, had a discussion before and it was kind of funky. Yeah, um, I, I want to review it with Nicole going out there. I think there may be an opportunity we're going in off Fox Pond Road, um, yeah. maybe the better option. We will um, put together an exhibit on our ANRAD plan showing where we think would be the best meeting place. And we'll get that over um, to Ann by the end of next week. That's perfect. And then she'll advise. Thank yep. You. Awesome. Appreciate much. everyone's time tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Oh, yeah, we're running early. <laughs> uh, well, I see James. James is here. Oh yeah. Okay. And John Morgan. So, um, I, I know. Our next few meetings will not be running early. So enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the eight o'clock time now. Uh, James is here. Uh, do you have any objection to opening the hearing a little early? Uh, no, I do not. Okay, the way we'll handle that is that um, before we uh, make any continuations, uh, or schedule any site inspections, we'll ask if there are any questions from the general public. And uh, if someone is late to the hearing, uh, we'll, we'll bring them up to speed. Cliff, was Don Martinez supposed to be a participant? I thought he was on earlier, but he doesn't seem to be now. Uh, I think Noel has the master list is Don on. I believe they're on as uh, Christine and Dawn. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Perfect. Okay. The Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing in accordance with the Mass Wants Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, on the notice of intent for pavement rehabilitation sidewalk construction and reconstruction, drainage improvements on bicycle widening for accommodation, including activities within the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands, inland and bank and riverfront areas to a perennial stream located on Route 126 South Main Street mm -hmm. from Douglas Drive um, to uh, Mechanic Street, Bellingham. John Morgan, CHA Consulting, Noel Mass has submitted the filing on behalf of Don DiMartino, uh, Bellingham DPW, 26 Blackstone Street, Bellingham. The hearing will be held uh, online via the Zoom option on Wednesday, July 28th at 8.20. We are early. Okay, um, Noel, I think 
we're going to have a request for a screen share here. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, who would like to share? John, James? Actually, uh, could you please let uh, Andrew Zalkovic share his screen? I think he's uh, 5090. Yeah. I see. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Uh, all set. All righty. Let's see. Screen two. <clears throat> Can you see it? Yes. All right. All right. Thanks, Drew. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is John Morgan. I'm the uh, design manager for CHA uh, with me tonight is uh, Andrew Belkovic, um, the project engineer, and also uh, James Hall. He's our uh, wetland scientist. And uh, I'll give a, a brief overview of the project and then I'll turn it over to, uh, to James to uh, give you some details on the uh, resource areas and the uh, project impacts on those resource areas. So, uh, to kick it off, uh, this project is Route 126, uh, South Main Street. Uh, the project limits are from uh, Douglas Drive at the southern end to uh, the Route 140 intersection. Uh, does not include the intersection. The work will uh, stop where the uh, work currently going on at the town center project uh, leaves off. Um, so the project total my project length is about 1.3 miles. Um, so this project uh, is being uh, funded through the uh, state and federal uh, transportation improvement program funding. So it's state and federal funds, it's about $6.5 million. Um, the town of Bellingham is the proponent of the project. Uh, the DPW, we're working closely with them. Um, the town is responsible for design and right of way costs associated with the project. And once it goes to construction, MassDOT will be responsible for construction oversight and inspection. Uh, the project is currently programmed in uh, federal fiscal year 2022. Um, so we're looking to complete the design and advertise for construction. Uh, in December of 2021, so the end of this year, and then uh, potentially starting construction next spring in 22. Uh, the purpose of the project is really roadway rehabilitation, infrastructure improvements, and also to improve bicycle and pedestrian accommodations and make the road a more complete street, and to address safety issues for uh, all users. So uh, just a few, you know, a summary of the proposed improvements. Uh, we'll be doing pavement reclamation. Uh, so we'll be recycling the existing pavement and the gravel sub-base. Um, what we'll be doing is, uh, you know, using a reclaimer to uh, uh, basically mix that, those two uh, layers up. Um, adding some asphalt emulsion and then uh, using putting that material back down as a uh, sub base for the new pavement. So uh, we are trying to re you know reuse some of that existing material and then there'll be eight inches of new pavement on top of the uh, on top of the reclaimed base that we put down. Uh, the let's see the uh, the road will be uh, widened to a consistent width. Um, we'll be looking to have uh, 12 foot lanes and five foot shoulders throughout the project. Uh, there will be a couple of intersections that will have additional turning lanes um, as well. Uh, we'll be adding turning lanes in the vicinity of, um, of Douglas Drive and Easy Street and the turning lanes at the signalized intersection at uh, Blackstone will will remain near the middle school. Um, so those will continue to have turning lanes at that location. Um, 
we'll also be looking to uh, reconstruct the existing sidewalks throughout the project and fill in any gaps in the existing sidewalk network. So there'll be a sidewalk on both sides of the roadway for the entire length of the project. Uh, currently there are sidewalks on both sides throughout a, a good portion of the project, but uh, there are some areas where uh, there are gaps in that sidewalk network. Uh, we'll be doing uh, asphalt sidewalks uh, with granite curbing um, along most of the roadway. Uh, we do have a short section where we have a, you know, a grass strip in between the, the curb and the sidewalk where we can fit it. Uh, we're limited by the right of way as far as where we can do that. Um, and then uh, we'll also be doing extensive, dra extensive drainage improvements. So for the majority of the project, uh, the existing drainage will be uh, replaced. We have uh, 43 new deep sump catch basins proposed and uh, a total of about 4,800 linear feet of new pipe. Uh, we'll be, re we'll be uh, reusing the existing drainage discharge points, so no new outlet points. And we will be also uh, installing a stormwater bioretention basin uh, located at the at the middle school, and that is, will be sized to treat over 2,100 feet of uh, South Main Street drainage before it discharges. So that is kind of an overview of what we're proposing, um, and I'll let uh, I guess if you have any questions on the overview, I can answer those or we can let uh, James get into uh, the details of what we have for resources and go through some of the plans and talk about uh, uh, what the impacts of the project are. Fair enough. Okay. James, you're up. Thanks very much. Um, my name is James Hall. I'm a professional wetland scientist um, and a certified professional erosion control. What I'd like to do is just go over briefly the environmental resources or ones that aren't here as the case may be, uh, proposed impacts, then we'll do a, um, conduct a, or at least discuss the riverfront area alternative analysis, and then just go over some regulatory compliance issues. I guess I'm gonna start with what resources aren't there because uh, that is the longer list and then we can talk about what is uh, on the project. So we do not have any FEMA 100 year flood zones. There are no natural heritage and endangered species estimated or priority habitats or vernal pools. There are no outstanding resource waters, public water supplies, zone A or B. There are no areas of critical environmental concern and there are no DEP wellhead protection areas. So what we have are um, boarding vegetated wetlands and uh, stream bank, inland bank. There are two uh, wetland series, G and H, and then we have two intermittent swales, S5 and F6, and one perennial, unnamed um, perennial tributary to the Peters River. And that is at the very south end of the project, actually outside the project limits. Um, and that, uh, that is S7. So moving forward, we are not impacting any stream bank and we are not impacting any wetlands. We will, however, be working within the 25 foot buffer uh, under the uh, Bellingham Wetland Bylaw. And then we'll, the 100 foot buffer um, under the bylaw and under the Wellness Protection Act, as well as riverfront area. I'm just gonna go over briefly what those impacts are. Uh, and then I'll probably move forward to the um, alternative analysis. So for riverfront area impacts, as I said, the unnamed tributary to Peters River, at the south end of the project that's up on the map, uh, you can see here in blue and wetland H is uh, further to the south side on the west side of the road. Uh, that is actually off the property and out of the project. We are gonna be installing guardrail along the road above the culverts, but no work is proposed in the stream or in the culvert. Um, it's all going to be north of that. So you can see there's uh, the 25 foot buffer zone and the 100 foot inner and 100 foot outer area. Of that, we have 10,019 square feet of in proposed impacts, 4,424 square feet 
um, of the inner and 5,595 square feet in the outer. Could, could you just enlarge that a little bit for us? Yeah, that will help. Oh, that's okay. There you go. That's so you can see, oops, sorry, uh, keep going. This project or presentation is for you. Interrupt me anytime if you have any questions. Uh, however, you're tasked with getting me back on track if we start going on tangent. Um, so can you, everybody see everything at this point? Yes. So, so the project ends before we get to the, the stream and there are gonna be no uh, proposed improvements to the culvert. Um, so as I said, we have the inner and the outer uh, impacts, 4,424 square feet inner and 5,595 square feet for the outer. However, we really only are having 828 square feet of new impervious area. Of that, 135 square feet is in the inner riparian zone and um, 695 square feet is in the outer. So really not that much impact to the riverfront itself. Um, Excuse me, is, is that due to the road widening or the sidewalk or a little bit of both? Uh, yes, uh, the road widening and sidewalk, yes. Specifically, basically everything is, is occurring uh, within and adjacent to the road itself. There's, there's nothing outside of that. Um, so anything else on riverfront? I'll, I can, I'm going to get back to this again. We go through alternatives as well. So, um, for buffer zones, we have um, three areas, two intermittent swales, and as we talked about, the uh, stream uh, named tributary to Peters River. And so, Drew, if you go to plan two, there we go. So that is uh, an intermittent uh, swale. It's called S6, and that has uh, inland bank uh, and the 25 foot local buffer zone, which will not be touching but we'll be touching the 100 foot buffer zone with that. And then can you go to plan four? Uh, there we go. Uh, and this is actually uh, wetland series G and stream series five. So ultimately we're going to have 34,151 square feet of impacts to buffer zone. That is a 100 foot buffer zone. Um, of that an existing 21,370 feet is impervious, so really not that much more impact to the buffer zone itself. Of that area, that 34,000 square feet, 4,061 square feet occurs within the inner 25, the local 25 foot buffer zone. Um, and of that, um, so 1,452 square feet of that 25 foot uh, buffer zone is going to be new impervious. And for the um, 100 foot buffer zone, 6,242 square feet. And remember the numbers I'm giving you, the large numbers for the 100 foot buffer zone, any numbers within the 25 are inclusive of that number. So 6,242 uh, 6, square feet of um, imp new impervious of that 1,452 is actually within the um, 20 foot foot buffer zone as well. Uh, as John mentioned as well, we are going to be um, doing some stormwater improvements uh, for the project to uh, improve um, uh, stormwater discharges. And we have 43 new uh, deep sump catch bases with oil eliminator hoods. Um, and so uh, John also mentioned we have a, um, a bioretention basin with a four bay. That is not within the jurisdiction of the um, Conservation Commission. It's up uh, south of Blackstone Street on the east side, adjacent to the middle school. But we are uh, providing a lot of improvements associated with that. Um, for uh, riverfront area as well, and I'll get into that with the alternative analysis, we actually have two new catch basins, deep sump catch basins with the eliminator hoods located within the inner 100 foot area of riverfront uh, associated with the unnamed tributary to Peters River. We also have an additional four, uh, excuse me, 12 uh, catch basins, again, deep sump with eliminator hoods that are in series uh, with those uh, two catch basins in the riverfront area. So we're actually improving a lot of the discharge that is going, flowing from the north to the south toward the river. Um, so that's an improvement overall, not only within the riverfront area, but adjacent areas that are contributing to the riverfront area. I thought I'd move on to talk about the alternative analysis, roof and area alternative analysis um, for this redevelopment project under 1058.5. Uh, 
Did anybody have any questions for what I've talked about so far? No, I think we'll wait for you to finish your presentation and then uh, we'll see what we have for questions and observations, if that's okay. Great. So for all, riverfront alternatives, um, the idea is to avoid impacts to resource areas um, and mitigate where we can, if, where we are gonna be involved with them. We are not impacting any land underwater and waterways. We're not impacting any inland bank. We are not, are not impacting any BBW. So um, for our first alternative, we had no, did no action alternative, which means do nothing. However, um, it won't improve the service life of the project and the deteriorated pavement and deteriorated stormwater system uh, really need to be um, uh, upgraded. And there's no continuous sidewalk for the entire project. Um, so basically the idea is that the no action alternative is not going to provide the improvements we need. We also had some road design considerations. One is simple resurfacing, but again, simple resurfacing is not going to improve and upgrade the stormwater drainage system and it is not going to um, improve the sub-base of the road itself, which is also deteriorating. So basically the simple resurfacing would have to be restored in a few years down the road. So that's really not an option either. You looked at the road cross-section modification as well, just to determine sidewalks and bike lanes and things like that. And to be in compliance with the Massachusetts DOT Healthy Transportation Policy Directive, um, the sidewalk, wheelchair ramps um, uh, and the bike lanes are all part of this upgrade uh, to the road itself as well. Um, so really there's not much we can do in terms of the modification for that as well. And then another uh, road design was considered was route routing alternatives. The problem is we've got an existing road, it's a linear infrastructure and we have linear resources, i.e. Uh, wetlands and or streams uh, on the project and so and re rerouting the road would possibly um, result in more impacts to wetlands and or streams or other resources. Uh, and so it's impractical as well as trying to get a new right of way and with the houses and the infrastructure, it's really impractical to try to reroute, reroute the, um, the existing road itself. So with the preferred alternative, as John mentioned, we're gonna have two 12 foot travel lanes, north and south, We'll have five foot bike lanes on outside of each of the um, travel lanes, and then we'll have 5.5 foot sides, uh, length sidewalks on each of the sides of the road as well. With the underground uh, improvements to and upgrades to the underground stormwater system, as I mentioned, we have 43 new deep sump catch basin eliminator hoods. Two of those are actually in the riverfront area, and 12 of those uh, are in series, uh, which will help improve water quality that's flowing to that area. As we also mentioned, there's the bioretention basin at the middle school south of Blackstone Street uh, with the four bay, and that is uh, going to be uh, improving a lot of the water quality in that area as well. So for regulatory compliance, um, there's five general standards that are required uh, under the Wetlands Protection Act. One is public and private water supplies, and the other is ground and another is groundwater supply. Because we don't have any public water supplies and it's going to be a road project, not really impacting the groundwater. We have erosion controls, best management practices. We have improvements to the uh, existing storm drainage system. Uh, and then as well as VMP measures like um, the bioretention basin that will help to improve all of that. For flood control, um, we, there aren't any 100 year flood zones. And again, improving the uh, stormwater drainage control with the um, upgraded and new um, sections of the stormwater drainage system, that's going to help with that as well. We also have prevention of pollution and again, upgrading the stormwater drainage improvements ex existing conditions with the fire retention basin and the catch basins um, will improve uh, prevention of pollution as well. There are no natural heritage native species habitat or vernal pool. There will be some impacts to wildlife in general during the construction phase of things, just with noise uh, and things like that. But for the most part, um, we don't anticipate having any significant impacts to wildlife habitat. And there are only four trees um, that are greater than 14 inch diameter at breast height, uh, which is considered a shade tree under the NEPA regulations. 
Um, so really there's gonna be limited amount of tree clearing as well. Finally, the town of Bellingham is a wetland protection bylaw. And we are going to be uh, proposing to do some work in the 25 foot no disturbance buffer zone. So we will be having to ask for a waiver for work in that area, just by nature of the road improvements themselves. I think that um, if anyone wants to ask questions on that uh, and or ask questions of Drew and John concerning uh, the engineering aspects of things, uh, I guess I can open it up to the conservation. Okay. Um, the first question is, uh, the first observation is that um, you will not require a waiver because there was an amendment to um, uh, our wetlands protection bylaw that exempted state or town projects. So you will not have to request a waiver for work inside the 24 no disturb zone. Thank you. I would say my pleasure, but <laughs> not really. <laughs> so, um, looking at the looking at the existing roadway, um, in, in fact, we were stuck in traffic um, just yesterday. And it was easy to see where uh, currently um, stormwater is running off uh, to the sides of the roads uh, all along that whole stretch of roadway. I mean, it's just going on to people's properties. Um, and, and I think the commission's primary concern is, and I counted 16 catch basins this series, not 14, but you know, it, whatever, 16 or 14 catch basins now will be collecting that water inside a curb line. So the volume has to increase over what is existing conditions. Cause it's not theoretical. It's what you can actually see in the field. And we can, we can see rivulets and runouts uh, all along the road as we were creeping along at one half mile an hour. So uh, one of our concerns is an increase in volume uh, at that primary discharge point. And normally when we do roadway res, uh, improvement permitting, uh, we look for additional uh, stormwater uh, improvements. And that's especially important now that we're dealing with the MS4 uh, upgrades. So we're gonna need a site walk. One of the things we're gonna wanna look at is your discharge point. And I know you were just talking about um, utilizing the existing, um, I think it's, it's, I think it was CMP uh, into the head wall. Is that correct? Um, so this is Andrew Vakovic. Um, so there's four different discharge points. The one you're probably referring to is the one at the Southern end to discharges to uh, the tributary to Peters Brook. Yep. Um, can pull up my utility plans here. Uh, so existing, there's a 48 inch corrugated metal culvert that conveys the stream underneath South Main Street. That's out of the scope of this project. Yep. What we will be replacing is the 18 inch uh, 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 reinforced concrete outlet pipe that discharges through the head wall. So we'll basically replace it up to the head wall. Um, and maintain that existing discharge point. And it'll be the same diameter. Correct. And do you agree that there's going to be an increase in volume? We do agree. We have sized our pipes accordingly. Um, you could say that the existing system is oversized. Um, I think you know, reviewing the record plans of the existing drainage in this area, we can't figure out where the existing drainage trunk line really is. What we have are these uh, existing catch basins connected in series, and then they just shoot off to the west side of the road. Could be a pipe over there. We couldn't, there's no indication of this pipe in any record plans. So we're just replacing the whole trunk line, catch basin connections, et cetera. Um, to avoid that that issue so your calculations are based on an, a, a closed drainage system with that series of catch basins and the discharge point 
uh, to the south. Yes. So it's, it's not, and again, it's not the whole road is flowing this way. No. Um, it's frozen. just basically south of the, you know, the Wegner's farm uh, or old Wegner's farm um, property. Yeah, where you lose the break point to go into the, 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 the um, bio detention area. Correct. Yeah. All right. So we, we, we get that. Um, but it, we, we really want to take a look at what we really want to take a look at in the field is an area where it might be possible to get some additional treatment. Because as we just discussed with the Mechanic Street project, um, DOT maintenance is, is not good. And, right. uh, and, and anything we can do to forestall, you know, not systems failure necessarily, but um, systems adequate functioning in the long term um, is, it, it, it's something that's it's really important to us. And we'll want to get out there and take a look at what might be available in the field. It'd be helpful if you could meet us out there, um, talk about some potential uh, additional structures that might be able to assist yeah. a, more per treatment. Yeah. And um, if I could just, you know, continue that, you know, so the town did, uh, Don did push us pretty hard and we went through a litany of potential options uh, in terms of locations for potential surface BMPs. Um, we considered, you know, we ultimately ended up on the, in the front lawn of the uh, middle school here, mm -hmm. considered behind, you know, basically getting rid of this baseball field, putting in a base in there. We considered uh, clearing out a good portion of the forest over here near the uh, church to build a basin. That was ultimately decided against because um, what you have is the high point in the road is around Potter Drive. Right where the, so every, the stand pipe is. Yep. So um, everything to the north of that flows towards 140. And uh, as part of the intersection project that's going on right now, we're rerouting the drainage to that comes off of South Main Street, goes through the intersection, and we're going to reroute it uh, towards a, a future drainage basin that's being uh, proposed as a uh, development associated with the development. And we've been in contact with that engineer to make sure their basin is sized appropriately uh, for MS4 requirements to treat the roadway runoff from South Main Street and the intersection with 140. Um, so, you know, we did, a, we did do a thorough, at the behest of the town and Don, a thorough analysis of where we think we could put things in. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's, it starts to become, okay, do you want to start clearing forests to build these, uh, these basins? Do you want to can we put them in someone's front lawn? You know, you're going to run into a lot of that issues, but of course we'd be happy to meet you on site to uh, discuss some alternatives and what, and we, you know, our, our thinking. Um, but again, this basin at the middle school, it's going to treat uh, just under an acre of stormwater, 90% uh, TSS removal with, um, you know, 30 to 50% nitrogen and phosphorus removal. Um, so, so I'll talk about Andrew. Let, let's go back to the high point. Let's go back to the standpoint, standpipe. Uh, okay, there it is. Um, so everything from that point down uh, north, I say down, but everything from that point north is going to go uh, into the new um, basin behind the town hall. And we are working on that permit now. We're working with that developer as well. And as it turns out, that was our suggestion that that get done. So the next thing is from the standpoint, uh, standpipe to the school, um, you're doing that stretch of road. So what, what we would be looking at in the field, we, we concur that those are proper and adequate engineering solutions. We agree 100%. What I think we're gonna look at is from the school uh, to the perennial stream, if there's some structure that might be able to be uh, established down near where the discharges into the perennial stream just to yep. handle that amount of water okay so it would be where's where's the where's where's the break where where are you gonna where's the break between the school drainage and what's going to flow into the tributary 
So, uh, around winters, isn't it? Uh, right. So, I mean, we'll have a couple basins at this intersection that will be able to pipe into the basin, uh, and basically everything south of that, um, you know, everything we'll, south of the everything south of the BP, basically. Yeah, we'll end up. You know, we'll we'll be treated through deep sump catch basins exclusively. Okay. Thank you. So when we go out there, we'll take a look and see if there's a structure uh, of some sort of a plunge pool, any, anything that might give us an additional treatment, um, and if necessary, energy mitigation. Um, I, I know that um, DEP issued a couple of comments. You've already responded to them. Um, normally, uh, a project that is magnitude will go out to peer review, but I think two thirds of it speaks for itself. We've already done some work on the northern section. Uh, I think the commission's probably comfortable, um, but we, we do want to take a look in the field with you guys and see if there's a way maybe to tweak this and. Um, make another small improvement. And, and we're really pleased that our DPW director is, uh, our thoughts are aligned with trying to improve water quality. Um, over the past many years, we've been able to make minor improvements uh, when we have roadway redevelopment projects and it has served the town well during the uh, MS4 assessment. So um, we wanna continue to do that. Um, now, uh, anybody on the commission have any other questions or comments? The information has been distributed. Um, the infiltration structure, Mr. Chair, yes. and by the middle school in the in the lawn off to the side to the east of from South Main. Yeah, it's oh. between. Yep, yeah, there it is. So, how close to the road is that? It looks like. I'm trying to re read where the sidewalk line is it going right up to the sidewalk. Is that the top edge there? Correct. So yeah. the back of the sidewalk is this line here, kind of where this uh, retain UP 163. There's the back of the sidewalk. It's a little bit of a big it is. how close is the school wall to the other side? Uh, so we'll be grading pretty much right up to the existing paved walkway that uh, kind of abuts the uh, face of the building. Is that so it, you're going to be fenced? So, yep, there will be a fence, um, uh, like a, a timber uh, post fence. <laughs> so a, a uh, split rail type fence? Timber rail, you said? Not that is, that is what we're currently looking at, but we are still talking with um, the, uh, the school about what the best treatment is. We have a pretty robust landscaping plan associated with this bioretention basin. Uh, that was also requested by the school to kind of help, you know, shield the uglier parts of the basin, the, you know, this sediment four bay as well, a stone base. Thinking just frankly, and I know this is not our pur purview, but I go for walks, my house is across the street down the hill. And so I walk up to the top of the hill there almost week, daily and looking across that area when school is in session, if they ever get back into actual always being on site, there's quite often lawn, uh, sections of the day when there are 50 or 100 kids out there on that side lawn doing various activities, exercise, recess, whatever. A split rail fence is not going to keep people out of that area, not throwing rocks around in the detention basin, but just safety-wise. We usually try to protect those areas from uh, people getting into them for safety as well as preserve the site. But if you're in talk conversation with the school department and the administrators of the school system they know what they're going to do or not going to do over there and if they feel it's safe to have that kind of thing located right where right up next to the school building where there's usually a lot of kids out there even by moving the kids away i'm just concerned about somebody walking into the area and getting injured when it's put it in fast public a place as uh possibly could be um second question i have was uh, well that's just an observation i know you guys if you're talking to the school department that's you know it's not our purview i just thought to raise it because it's so close to the road and so close to the sidewalk um you said that you don't have any plans for the i want to make sure i heard that right any plans for where the existing drainage pipe the main trunk line is i think you referred to it is in the, for the entire length of the project is that right 
Uh, no, just oh. for, I'm sorry, was it quite, we know where there's a section towards the southern end of the project where the existing tr drainage trunk line uh, does not show up on the record plans. Okay, we do so have it for the other 75% of the of the project. We know where the existing trunk line is. We're still replacing a good chunk of it um, as needed. Okay, and I, whether it was in James's presentation or somebody else, uh, in the overall presentation, there was 4,800 linear feet of pipe being replaced, is that correct? Did somebody say that? Uh, yeah, that sounds roughly right, yep. So it, and then, and it just to, so I can put it in perspective, how long is the overall project compared to that in feet? So it's a 1.3 miles, so. Um, <laughs> 7,000 square feet or 7,000 feet. Linear feet. Okay. So about a little, a little more than half of the pipeline is being replaced in the main trunk pipeline. Yeah. Okay. And is it mostly in the South end where that's yes. returned? Okay. So it's not the upper. Okay. Just, just curious because one of the thoughts I had was if there is, as the chairman has pointed out, a lot of surface flow already just going off the road. And we had an issue with further down, um, just past the middle school on the east side, there was a project that we recently were called to permit that had a drainage pipe that flowed off. Mr. Chair, do you remember which site that was? One something? It flowed, there was a wetland, I think he's got it right there. There was a, a wetland area, uh, it came up to a pipe and then it exited onto the Wingo property. Oh, no, no, this was the, the private home across the street that wanted to have the septic replaced in their backyard with the big tree. Oh. It was near Wagner, but the other side of the road. Right, that was, that's the brook that comes out of the pond, Lakeview Pond and runs behind those houses and then crosses the road. Okay, so what I was meant remembering was that they had a drainage pipe from the street that flowed back to the bottom of this plan, the way it's shown, in roughly that area, and into some wetlands down behind this person's house, and okay. nobody seemed to know what that drainage line was for, or the pipe was for, and that it may have been crushed or failed. Do we think that's going to be the case elsewhere along the line? Well, I, I think what happened, Mike, is back in the day, um, people would put, you know, people would put in a catch basin and wouldn't connect it to anything else. They would just run it off on property. Um, I mean, that's the way they used to do things. And, you know, if, if the catch basin failed, they just put another catch basin in or the pipe was clogged, they'd clean it out. I, I think we've seen some of that, but I would imagine any of these offshooting pipes are going to be abandoned and the drainage system is going to be contained within roadway. Is that right, Alex? Uh, Andrew? Correct. Okay. So we're not counting on any of these old structures, some of which we've already discovered here and there in hearings have failed or we don't know their mystery structures and when you mentioned that and the other 4800 or the other section of unknown piping down near the south end of the project i'm like okay if you're not counting on any of that working and i know you're putting a new pipe down there but all up going towards the center of town not going north on this road none of those old drainage lines up are going to be needed or need to be rediscovered and we're not going to have to worry about that extra flow suddenly being not accounted for and needed to be accounted for then that's good. That's reassuring to know that. Thanks. Correct. So I, I do have another question and it, it does uh, revolve, revolve around existing drainage. Uh, Andrew, if you could bring us back to uh, Black, the Blackstone Street intersection. You want this view or this one? No, nope, that one. Okay. Get a larger a little bit. Okay. So what I was getting out of this one is that there were some catch basins there, but you're tying them into the drainage system that's going to go into um, the bioretention area by the school. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Okay, because there were a couple of catch basins there that um, ran down Blackstone Street and discharged into a resource area directly. So those, and, and I was having a hard time seeing them. I, I, on the full size plans, it looked to me like you were uh, replacing the catch. But I see your drain line there. This, there's one. And there was something on the other side. 
Mm. What's the structure with the, the dark base just to the left of your cursor? Keep going to the left. Uh, so over here. Uh, that, keep going, that, keep going. That, that thing, that rectangular thing with the dark base and the hole in the middle of it. Just underneath the S. Just underneath the S, that thing. Yeah. Oh, this? Yeah. Okay, that's um. So this line is a actually an easement line. Oh. Um. So we're gonna have to take an easement from number ten sixty eight to accommodate um, <laughs> basically extension of the sidewalk and the associated uh push button equipment so someone can cross the road there. So this is just a this is an easement line. This is this symbol right here is a uh, traffic signal post. Uh, that thing was driving me crazy. <laughs> what is this thing? Yeah, what yeah. What structure is this? Okay, so when so, we go out, I, I just want to take a look at the existing drainage that we have there and, and make sure that you're going to be picking that up. I, you know, how far down the street on that side of the ground? No, uh, Cliff, Cliff, yeah. street, street View doesn't show any drainage on that side of the intersection currently. Oh, well, it's there. Yeah, there's a basin existing here. Um, just at the driveway. When you go around the curb there to the right and then down the hill, there's also a catch basin near the bottom just before the research. Oh, I see the one, I see the one by the way up by the driveway. Got it. So yep. what we'll do is we'll just take a peek at that and we'll have your full size plans. We really appreciate being able to look at them and zoom during a public meeting, but um, you know, holding full size in the field, looking at it uh, makes it a lot easier for us. We're not pros. So, uh, I mean, I think that's, are there any other questions from the commission? Um, so probably what we would do here when we conduct this walk, and this is just a suggestion, maybe we could park uh, at the driveway to the south of where the viral retention area is gonna be we could walk up to this intersection. I don't see any need to go north, but we could, yep, that driveway, we could look at the bioretention. Uh, it's outside our jurisdiction. Technically it's not because the filings for drainage, but um, what we'll do is we'll look at the intersection, then we can walk south. We can look at the area where the crossing is onto the Winger property. Um, we're gonna ask you to stake out the limit of activity there. That's the first wetland area we'll come to moving to the south. Um, if you could do that, and then we'll walk down to uh, the perennial stream crossing. Um, so I guess uh, you, you asked to the limits of work to be staked out. Right, um, I don't think it'll be necessary at the perennial stream crossing because you're planning on using an existing headwall, correct? Correct. Okay, so, and, and we're gonna ask to see if there's a way to put a small structure in there. But I know there's an area uh, where the Wenger property is to the west, there's a uh, intermittent stream uh, that you would point out early, right there. Uh, so if you could just stake out the limits of work there, um, I think that's the only thing we're gonna ask you to do before the sidewalk. There's no work that's gonna take place um, to the west, is that correct? Uh, on the west side of the road here? Yeah. Well, we'll be adding a sidewalk, basically maintaining the existing edge of the roadway. If you look there, there's like a level, like seven foot wide gravel area that we're just gonna build a sidewalk. So that if you get out there, you'll see it's a kind of a steep, it then kind of drops off into the Wagner's property. We're just going to build a sidewalk there. Um, the grading should be such that we don't, don't have to go past the electric fence um, for uh, the farm animals there. Um, so that kind of, that fence kind of does demarcate, okay, this is where our basically our limit of work is. Um, and then on the east side of the road, yeah, we can, um, yeah, we can, I guess, come up with a way to stake out approximately where our limits of grading are. It won't take a lot of area. I mean, it's, yeah, it comes to a point there. <clears throat> and on the west side, that's one of the areas where you'll be utilizing your slope stabilization protocol. Uh, correct. So, yep, you okay. have a, 
erosion controls prepared for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, At the Blackstone Street intersection, if you back that a second and go to the far right of the intersection. Actually, yeah. Yeah. So the sidewalk where Cliff was pointing out, and you pointed out that's an easement structure, does the sidewalk curve down in a situation like that where there's no sidewalk currently on that side of the street at that intersection? How far down the Blackstone Street are you going with the sidewalk before you stop? Uh, so under existing, uh, on the south of Blackstone Street, there is a sidewalk on each and side on of the, the road. The northwest corner, right where you talked about that. Oh, here, street. okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, and what was the question about this area? So there's no sidewalk there now. Just I'm trying to understand in a situation along the street here where you're adding sidewalks to have a consistent double yep. sidewalks all the way the entire length. What do you do in a situation like that where going north on the plan or yeah, north, I guess it does on the plans or straight ahead around that corner, the sidewalk will just stop after a few feet or is it a certain distance? So it will, uh, it will basically continue around. Like, so if you're a pedestrian on this side of the road coming from the north, You'll head south. If you want to continue south, there'll be a crosswalk, a new crosswalk here. Yeah. And you'll be forced that way. And then, yeah, you're right. You will not be able to continue along Blackstone Street on the north side of Blackstone Street. If you want to walk down Blackstone Street, well, you'll have to continue on the sidewalk on the south side of, of okay, Blackstone Street. Right, right where you're approaching now is the wetlands, the uh, resource areas that Cliff was referring to that are direct drain needs into. Right? That's right in there. Correct. Oh, yeah. Uh, street there. Okay, just want to make sure that we weren't talking about a sidewalk now suddenly cutting through a resource area if they kept going on that side. That's fine. Okay. That's that's clarified. It. Thank you. And and was Cliff right that you are taking the, what drains directly down into that now and capturing it up there above on and the routing it into the basin? Correct. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. This one. This one's going to be tricky. Um, I don't know if um, uh, <coughs> James and Andrew um, are going to be present or John for the site walk. Uh, we've scheduled one for August 14th, uh, but it's a 4,200 linear foot ANRAD evaluation. And we're not sure how long that's going to take. Um, I'd like to put you on after that. <laughs> so... It's going to be plus or minus in terms of time. We've got this scheduled for 830. Um, if we move, we could probably do 4,200 4, uh, linear feet in an hour and a half. The site is uh, primarily a uh, tow of slope resource area. Not, uh, it's had been previously delineated, you know, um, 15 years ago. We're not expecting a lot of changes. So if, if we figure an hour and a half, that'd be 10 o'clock. So if you, is it, would that work for you on August 14th? Can you guys get out there? Uh, I'm sure, yeah, of course. Yeah, we could, I'm sure we could find someone. Um, if not myself, John or Jay, or a collection of us. Um, I mean, alternatively, we, we, we could try to do it during the week uh, on an evening. Sometimes the evening ones are more convenient for us, but for consultants uh, during rush hour, after, after having done a, a 5.30 hour long walk, now it's 6.30, uh, wherever you have to go to get home may not be convenient. It might be easier on a Saturday. I would personally prefer a week, a weekday night. Um, All right. Well, then that being the case, we do have one set up on Tuesday, Tuesday the third, no, at five thirty. You're not adding another one. No, we can't add another one because that one may take a while. It's another. Uh, it's Route One Forty uh, drainage improvements. We'll have to go to the week of the 14th. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to be in Vermont. <laughs> but I think that, Drew, you are more important than I am in terms of erosion control, like, no, excuse me, erosion, um, stormwater drainage and basins and things like that. 
it doesn't sound like you need me necessarily for the wetland features, but um, you. I think 14th is out. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. I, I think the 14th is out because in the event we run late on our major ANRAD review, we don't wanna leave you guys no, hanging. No. So enjoy what about, Vermont. What about the board minutes? Can they meet on the following Tuesday? How about the following Tuesday? Do we have uh, the 10th. That would be Tuesday, August 10th. That sounds good to me. What time? It'd be 5.30. Um, Mike, Neil. I'm checking right now. To, I might have a library committee meeting that I have to be at 7. But I mean, I could go if we go at 5 or something, I'd be, that'd be enough time, right? How, much, how long do we think it'll take? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to estimate 45 minutes. Are we getting a police escort up and down the road <laughs> to risk our lives? On? I think we'll do it. We'll, we'll do it from, we'll do the whole walk. Um, from the west side of South Main Street. Would Monday oh, where there's better? a sidewalk. Would Monday be better? No, uh, 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 no, Tuesday's fine. Tuesday, Tuesday would probably be better. That's fine. I can be late to the library meeting if there is one even. That's fine. Noel, can you make that one too? Yes, Tuesday works. Awesome. Bye. Mike, if you're late to a library meeting, do they charge you? <laughs> no, he gets. <laughs> he has to bring back all of his late books. It, it'll turn out fine, really. <laughs> they got it covered. All right. I just can't be there before five because I have an uh, appointment until four forty-five in town. But I can pop over right after. All right. So what I'll do. Um, I'll let you take a motion to conduct a, a site evaluation on Tuesday, August 10th at 5.30 and continue the hearing to the evening of August 25th at 8.15. So moved. Second. Discussion. Okay, I'll poll the members, Mr. Stanley. Yes. Noel. Hi. Michael. Hi. Marianne. Hi. Okay, that's by unanimous vote. So um, we'll see you on August 10th. We'll take a look at it. Please bring a set of full size plans. Um, and we'll look at primarily the three areas. Neil, definitely bring your fluorescent vest. I'm bringing mine. I don't leave home without it. Yeah, probably not a bad idea. Uh, 5.30 site investigations and evaluations are okay if they're off the road, but when they're on rush hour traffic, <laughs> it's life in hands. Do you still have those flags, Cliff? Didn't you bring those to one of the site walks along the road? A couple, a couple of like orange flags on sticks? I never had those. Oh, it must have been Barry. I think it was Barry that had them. Yeah, he did. Because yeah. he was doing survey work for Veda. Um, okay, so... Uh, I think that um, we're all set, guys. All right. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Hey, Bye. take care. Frank is still with us. That's awesome. He's hardcore. <laughs> okay. So, so Tuesday evening, August 3rd, I'll have a couple things for you guys to sign. Okay. Sure. So Frank, is just help me out with the engineering on this. Right now, there are catch basins that go off site. Mm -hmm. um, there's water that runs out uh, off the road. Uh, all we care about is them calculating everything that's caught within the contained roadway in the drainage system to make sure that uh, it's going to work. Right. I'm. Um Typically, the sidewalk is graded back toward the roadway. So it's really from the edge of the sidewalk to the curb and then the rest of the roadway across there. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see if they can come up with something to help us out with water quality at the bottom of the hill. Um, we could just run a pipe into the pond if nobody's looking. 
That's what they used to do. I know Mass DOT does not want to have the uh, duty of taking care of water quality units. So you're not going to ever get them in the project. That's right. I had one years ago where um, had the municipality not volunteered to take care of the water quality units. I'm not sure they ever did, but that's another story. Mass DOT wouldn't have done the project. So um, well, they don't take care I, I know that the town will be taking care of the management at the school. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can find out if they'd be willing to, because it's not going to be very big. It's just, you know, a plunge pool, energy mitigation, and that'll be it. Now, did so I hear that they're going to be using hoods in this, on the, this work they were just talking about? Oh, yeah. Um, it's not really my purview, but are they going to be using hoods on the Curtis apartments? It's a, it's not a. They don't add a lot of um, water quality improvement. They add something. I don't remember them mentioning hoods on Curtis. I, I didn't. I don't. I mean, I, said, I didn't look at the they details. They said they said they were they were focused on deep sump, but I don't. I never heard them. Say, they might have, but I never heard them. I didn't hear them say. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the details too on that. If that. It's a small thing, but it might be something. I normally I would not think Mass DOT does that, but they mentioned it here. And what's good one portion of the town might be good someplace else. Absolutely. One of the things um, I think that I had mentioned to you, Frank, on the um, Mechanic Street um, notice of intent was they they claimed um, when they were they had their statements on how they met the standards. And they said that the operation and maintenance was included in the Curtis Apartments filing. Um, but that cannot be true uh, because they're proposing. <laughs> they're proposing. I'm, unless the Curtis Apartment people are going to be taking care of State Highway. <laughs> yeah, I was confused exactly. by that. Yeah. So. Yeah, you brought that to our attention. It's like. So get the residents to pitch in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Well, um, you know, we, we, we're we finishing just shy of nine. So, um, good. Thank you so much, everybody. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Frank. So, You're very welcome. Well. Happy to be here. Um, Hope well, everyone has a good rest of the week. Yes. Yeah. Same here to all of you as well. Thank you. I'll breathe the hazy air outside. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Take week. care, folks. Motion to adjourn. Good night. Good night. Uh, motion to adjourn. Yes, so much. Hi. Okay, good evening, everyone. <laughs>